Right, thanks very much. I want to go now to Congressman uh, Trent Franks, who's a member of the House Freedom Caucus. Congressman, thanks very much uh, for joining us. Uh, just very briefly, I mean, at this point, are you a no or a yes? Well, I remain undeclared because there are still other side negotiations taking place, but I am uh, very encouraged that the Freedom Caucus Amendment is uh, going into the bill uh, tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, what else are you looking for? I mean, what else are you hoping to come in? Because the White House well, says there, there's no more negotiation I, from the White House. Yeah, in an ideal world, we'd love to just see insurance be insurance and that we would see, um, like, uh, pre-existing conditions taken out in a, in a special high-risk pool uh, so that we could let the rest of insurance be as uh, uh, actuarially uh, predictable as possible. Because uh, when you have forced insurance and you require people to, to enroll uh, people that have pre-existing conditions without some sort of compensation or compensation uh, mechanism, then it makes it very difficult for insurance, insurance companies to make any kind of actuarial predictions. Do you have a sense, Congressman, of, of whether or not the uh, Speaker Ryan, the White House, has enough votes to, to pass this? No, I don't know that. I don't know that at all. I don't know what the, the vote count is. I, I just suggest to you that uh, the Freedom Caucus has labored very diligently, and I think they've improved the bill significantly. And uh, uh, I think that could make a difference. I don't know. Congressman, I also want to bring in Gloria Borger and John King, because I know they have some questions. Uh, Gloria? Yeah, Congressman, do you think the Freedom Caucus will stick together uh, opposing this bill, as it's been opposed to this bill all along? Or will it you know, splinter you know, I, with some for, some opposed? I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, uh, only that I think that their efforts so far have improved the bill significantly. There's still much that could be done. And I'm going to hope all the way up to the deadline that we do everything that we can, either in the bill or through some type of side uh, uh, discussions that will improve it in the long run. Can, can you describe a little bit how intense these negotiations have been with the president and with his staff and what it's been like to be inside sure. those rooms? Well, you know, I, I don't know what other people's experiences have been. I was at the White House this morning. Uh, I talked to the president yesterday one-on-one, -on -one, and I will just say to you that uh, the man approached me in a reasonable, uh, rational manner, and uh, I thought that uh, it was amazing to see a president this engaged personally. And I've seen an open process in the House, and I mean, this is just kind of happy days again uh, in many ways for the, the process itself. Now, ultimately, the real test is going to be what comes out of the, the final product here. Uh, and I think it's so vital that instead of ever uh, questioning each other's commitment to America, that we try to get together and say, OK, our commitment is ubiquitous. We're all together and we all have the same objective. Now, let's discuss how we can best achieve that objective. And that's what we're trying to do. Congressman Franks, John King, there's a lot that's very different in Washington these days, but there is a known gravity. Uh, let's assume you get this bill through the House tomorrow. It will go to the Senate. Uh, they are likely to make it more moderate or change it from the House perspective. Choose the word, if you will. You understand the dynamic uh, as well, if not better than I do. If it comes back at that point to the House and you are told this is the best we can get, uh, do you feel an obligation to repeal and replace? Or at that point, will you say, no way, this is not what I signed on to and it will collapse again? Well, I don't dodge the question except to say that there's no way to know what's going to come back, and you have to, to judge it on its merit so when it comes back. But I will say this, and it's the most untold, underreported, uh, most significant dynamic of all in all of this negotiation, and it is the House efforts that are so complex and so complicated by the Senate rules. We're having to put this bill through what's called the Bird Rule in the Senate, because we have to do this through reconciliation because the Senate has to have 60 votes to even bring the bill to the floor. I don't know if there's that way in anywhere, any other parliamentary body in the world where the majority can't pull a bill to the floor without the help of the, of the minority. And so we're having to do this through reconciliation and therefore it must fit through the bird rule. And I've got to tell you, that's, it, with this bill, that's like trying to, to shove a camel through a keyhole. He's the little worse for wear on the other side of the process. So this uh, Senate rule, this arcane nightmare that no one understands is subordinating the best policy uh, deliberations here and the tail is wagging the dog. You know, it's just unfortunately. Congressman Franks, I appreciate your time.